Since our last dev diary in March earlier this year, the Iliac Bay team has made significant progress on the Three Kingdoms pre-release. We have a wealth of new assets, including clutter for both High Rock and Hammerfell, and statues of the Yakudan Pantheon. Shahana's story content is coming together, and we have several new armor sets ready. And for the first time, we will be showing a segment of gameplay footage featuring a cave on the island of Hearn. Welcome to the Iliac Bay Dev Diary for October 2020. In the centuries since the War of the Bendermark and the Oblivion Crisis, Shahana has spent much of its time and resources on rebuilding and fortification. Though its people are normally quite open to outsiders, travelers from Skyrim through Frostbound Pass are met with suspicion. The tension between the Bretons of Shahana and the Nords of Skyrim is much healed, though far from over, as some Nords consider it part of their homeland. Although Skyrim is preoccupied with the consequences of its own civil war, many in High Rock fear another attempt to claim Johanna as a Nordic hold is possible. Some of the most ardent Nords still insist on calling the region by its previous name, Briamarch, the Lost Tenth Hold. But the Bretons do not intend on letting their fair city fall to an occupying force ever again. And despite these issues, Johanna remains an important trading city a beacon of idealism and tolerance in this part of the world. We have finished multiple armor sets, including one for High Rock and two for Hammerfell. In the northern regions, those who can afford it often choose metal over leather or fabric. When the occasion calls for it, many Breton nobles wear sets of full plate armor. Specially crafted to allow for movement despite the apparent bulk, this set is most often seen in tournaments or on commanders in the battlefield. That is, unless they are wealthy enough to afford adamantium, a particularly rare commodity even amongst the upper classes. On the other side of the Iliac Bay, the people of Hammerfell and its islands are faced not with temperate climes, but a blistering sun. Most of the year, the sands glow in the heat, and your distance from shelter can sometimes be a greater risk than that of almost any hostile creature. The Redguard people have adapted their clothing to this harsh climate. In the Forebear regions, the cities of Rehad, Taneth and Elenhir, the people wear outfits inspired by real-world modern Middle Eastern aesthetics, featuring cloth covers and intricate patterns. Forebear attire has been influenced by the surrounding Breton and Imperial cultures for millennia, but still retain its own unique character. Outside the cities and islands, hiding in caves and behind sand dunes, the dune dwellers are a pervasive threat to travelers in Hammerfell. They have refused to integrate into city life, and most dismiss them as common bandits. Despite this, they have adapted to the desert, wearing thick cloth reminiscent of the Raga style, with masks and goggles to allow passage through sandstorms. Most give them a wide berth, probably due to their threatening appearance and the stories that go along with it. In truth, however, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better guide through the less-traveled areas of Hammerfell. Many Red Guards who live in the more traditional areas of Hammerfell still believe in the divine pantheon of the Yakudan people, as it was long before they came to these shores. Although some of these deities have been adapted to an imperialized worship of the divines in many parts of Tamriel, many still observe the gods as they did in Yakuda. The bird god Tava is the Yakudan spirit of the air and goddess of the weather. She led the Yakudans to Hearn after the destruction of their homeland. And although her story and deeds have been largely adopted into the mythology of Kinnereth, she is still popular amongst the people of Hammerfell, 
especially travellers and sailors, and her shrines can be found in most port cities. Morwa, the Yakudan god of fertility, is still a familiar deity in Hammerfell, particularly in the city of Port Hunding on Strossum Kai. It is said that she is the favourite wife of Ruptka, the chief Yakudan deity, more commonly known as Tall Papa. Morwa is always pictured with four arms instead of two, so that she is able to reach for more husbands. The legend of Sep the snake shares many similarities with that of Lorcan. Driven mad by the endless hunger of Satakal, the Yakudan world eater endlessly destroying and rebuilding the world, Sep fled to the mortal plane. For this he was punished, but Sep's hunger still remains, an anomaly of space, like a void in the stars. It is said that this hunger aims to trap mortal souls as they leave for the far shores. Our team has gone to great lengths to bring Hammerfell's culture to life. Houses, made from thick clay, protective against the unrelenting sun. Tools, pots and baskets. Everything to create the important feeling of a part of the world having its own identity. When you walk these dunes, when you visit the civilization that sprung up thousands of years ago, the immersion relies on the details, the little pieces that are the telltale signs of life. Wherever people live, they make a mark upon the world, and we want to make sure that your journeys in Hammerfell bring with them a sense of wonder, the feeling that you're visiting a place unlike anywhere you've been before. Although the Yakudan continent is little more than a distant legend, its people and culture still live on in Hammerfell, no more so than on the island of Hearn. Its inhabitants have sworn not to leave the island until the heirs of a great Yakudan emperor have returned. For over 3,000 years, they have abided by this promise, despite the old isle being little more than a barren rock. After the construction of Hegaith on the mainland, most abandoned Hearn, leaving behind them only ruins of the Yakudan's first major settlement in Tamriel. Nestled inside the cliffs on the western side, a tribe of goblins and Durzogs have set up a fortification in the natural cave formations. This is one of the locations you will be able to explore during your visit to the island.
We hope you have enjoyed this look at our progress this year. Our pre-release, The Three Kingdoms, is coming along well, and we're excited to share more about it in the future. The Iliac Bay team is currently accepting applications for the implementation and 3D modeling departments. If you are interested in learning real game development skills from modders, you should consider joining the Arcane University, a collaboration between several major Elder Scrolls modding projects, including Beyond Skyrim. Visit beyondskyrim.org forward slash join for more information. Thank you very much for watching.